All right, that's Dartmouth's men's basketball team this weekend getting blown out by Yale. We had them losing one of their many games. They lose a lot. The game we were going to show you, they lost 80 to 56. Dartmouth isn't good. They're 6 and 21 overall and 1 in 12 in the Ivy League. For those keeping score, it puts them in last place. This team will not be remembered for basketball. However, they may be remembered by unions worldwide and students worldwide for absolutely ruining college athletics. The Service Employees International Union said they'll go down as one of the greatest basketball teams in history because they just voted to unionize 13 to 2. They want salaries, working conditions, rights and benefits. It's a long list. Impressive list of grievances. Elizabeth Pran is here, former Division I lacrosse player who's currently suing the University of Florida for back pay <laughs> with interest. Given that she graduated I want it now. Yeah, a long time I want ago, it now. that would be a lot of interest. I mean, we graduated last year. At and it's still, a, still a lot of interest. Years. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Don't you have to be good at your job in order to ask to be paid for it? Well, that depends on who you, if you ask these lovely gentlemen, that's not okay. the case. There was a couple things, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they wanted $20 an hour. They wanted to be paid equivalent to the folks who are working in the cafeteria. Uh, this, I, I think you, you're asking to become a club sport at this point, if you ask for this. I think it's really opening up Pandora's box, if you think about it, because now is it going to be every college, every collegiate team is going to be asked to be unionized? What does that look like? Well, what, what I, I, yeah, look, you went to the University of Florida, and the reason that they could have scholarships for lacrosse players is because the football teams and the baseball teams and the basketball teams made an enormous amount of money for the school, right? They did TV rights yep. at all. So all of a sudden, if they start paying the football players and the basketball players, then your scholarship and the swimmers and the track and fields disappear, right? Well, and to what end? And this is another point that I want to bring up. Then you compared to 20 years ago, give or take a couple years when, and also my husband was a division one athlete. At the time, there was no Instagram. There was no Supreme Court ruling where we could, in fact, make money off of our image. There, there was no endorsements at the time. For There are ways that if you are good at your job, if you are a college athlete, you can make money doing what you love. But at the same time, you are not an employee of the school. You are a student athlete. You are getting an education. That is one of the greatest things you can ever get. And you are probably not going to be a professional at what you do. If you're going to Dartmouth, you probably were, are going to be a banker as opposed to a basketball player, if we're just talking statistics. And you're, go you're going to Dartmouth. Now, the Ivy Leagues don't give scholarships for athletics, but oftentimes it's very helpful if you're good at athletics to get into Dartmouth and then you, you get a scholarship. I was on the radio earlier in WGN in uh, Chicago talking to Lisa Dent and a couple of their uh, listeners texted in. Anyone who joins the basketball union gets paid should not be able to accept a scholarship, pay for your own school and board. At $20 an hour, that suddenly became, becomes a lot more difficult, especially at a place like the University of Florida or other things where they have big scholarships. This would be the question. Um, does this speak to a different view of athletics for, from 20 years ago when, give or take a year, when you, when you were there, of, oh, of whether I, it's a I privilege would, to play? I, I would agree so, too. And I also think... Can you think, some, what would your coach have said if you said, I want to form a union? <laughs> you know, one of our lessons, too, was when we were in school to learn how to shake the hand of a potential employer. That was one of our lessons, because you are not... As a college athlete. As a college... You are probably not going to play. Like, if you look at my husband, God bless him, he was a Division One athlete. He now, he, he played for almost two decades in the major leagues. Statistically, that is very unlikely. But I'm also curious what it's going to do to the landscape. Are these schools going to be able, if, if they are unionized, are these smaller schools going to support no. these programs? It's just not something that's reasonable. And they're saying it's such a win. It's not really a win. It's, it's, well, it's, a, win. it's a win for the union. It's not a win for all the high school kids who want to go play Correct. college sports. It was lovely to see you. Have fun on Banfield to sure tonight. You've got a huge Birmingham. show coming up. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.